Hello and welcome to another episode of Never On Site. Hi, this is Joseph, and joining me as usual is Mayur. This video will be doing a reaction of the last night um, Champions League matches and uh, match day three in general. So let's get into it. So these are the results from match day three. Um, Mayu, uh, which matches did you watch and what takeaways from these? Uh, yeah, so just to start off, I watched a bit of Bayern. They already scored like three goals in the starting 20 minutes, and that was easy. Musiala playing as number 10, and definitely we are seeing the various levels he has reached now. Initially, he was he tried he was tried on the wings, but now he playing in the 10 and dictating the play. He has like uh, come out as a whole different player and we saw how crucial he has been in that number 10. So that was something I watched in the first uh, 20 minutes itself. Bayern scored three goals. So that game I watched uh, and then moving on to obviously the Inter-Barcelona game for that night. Uh, rough day for Barcelona. Uh, so to give you a gist what happened in that match. Uh, weekend On the weekend, uh, Barcelona faced a similar opponent, Mallorca. And every Barca fan was uh, very skeptical about how Barcelona generally plays against a lower block team who like to play in a 5-4-1 or 5-3-2 kind of a uh, uh, formation. So everyone was very skeptical how would Barca play. And basically, uh, Xavi has still not learned from his mistakes, I still think. Because we saw uh, on the weekend, we were lucky Lewandowski scored a goal on his individual brilliance. But uh, we weren't the greatest of uh, the teams or not created many chances. Again, a similar thing against the better quality opponents who know how to finish their chances, Inter took their chance and scored the goal. So except that goal scoring chance, I don't see there was any major chance for Inter. So we should have scored. So our centre back should know better and the team in general that we are bound to concede on the counter-attacking part. So we should be ready, but we weren't. And again, we have lost so many centre backs to injuries. Christensen, uh, Eric, uh, uh, Christensen, Arao and Kunde. So it was a problem and offensively, uh, except Pedri, everyone was very quiet. Dembele had such a bad game. So it was just hope uh, that uh, for Barca fans that Dembele has a good game, then eventually we could create chances. But he was played on the right hand side. Rafinha was played in the left half space and Marcus Alonso was played as the left wing back who uh, came up and down on the wing. So, a completely uh, different formation. Not many players knew what they were doing. It was just a very chaotic scenario. So, yeah. There uh, were some um, controversies as well, right? With the handball. Yes. Uh, one goal we scored, uh, it was taken off because of a handball, but it was very harsh. The keeper uh, deflected the ball very last minute. And the same thing repeated, uh, like uh, Dumfries came for a header but it it hit his hand and uh, again the favor the uh, offside ruling was in uh, interest favor so it was a blatant uh, very bad call from referee's end definitely on another day we both have we might have scored both those goals and would have won but yeah taking away that it was a very bad game uh, from officiating perspective as well and from barcelona's uh, perspective as well so yeah nothing good for barcelona on that day all right Liverpool 2-0 um, winners at Anfield. This is a match that I watched and um, the first goal was a brilliant free kick by Trent Alexander-Arnold. That got Liverpool into the game and uh, also there was a penalty which Salah converted. So, uh, Liverpool were confident. They are still uh, trying out a new system uh, in this match. And it was a four-two-three-one uh, with uh, Henderson and Thiago playing in the asset pivot role, and Jota coming in and uh, playing almost as a number ten and dragging in defenders. With Nunes getting a lot of chances, but he failed to convert uh, most of those chances. Yeah, so that was the story about uh, Liverpool match, and uh, I think Klopp is tweaking his system. And uh, like we mentioned, Thiago. Uh, Jota is a key member in that uh, system right now because he gets into those half spaces and drags defenders in and creates spaces for uh, the likes of Diaz um, and uh, Salah. So that is something we'll have to watch. 
and moving on um, for the next one, game zero events which the next game which i was games. very interested to yeah. talk about was the ix napoli game so initially uh, everyone thought uh, it would be a, a group like the group will end up with liverpool and ix qualifying but napoli has definitely shown why they are currently in that form i guess even who's there at top for syria a as well uh, their top rate yeah. if i'm right yeah i yes. think so i think so and scoring six plus ix on their home ground uh, we definitely we saw so uh, napoli has been very adaptive against liverpool they sat back and played on the counter but against ix who like to build up from deep they pressed very high got those turnovers and scored goals so yes. this just shows us how versatile napoli is and how dangerous that can be so a, way, a yeah. big shout out to napoli who is uh, turning yeah, out I to have be... been impressed with uh, napoli throughout the season they have played really well and uh, just like you said the flexibility that they have and also after the first two goals were uh, came in ajax were all over the place and napoli were countering them whenever they wanted so napoli is on top of that uh, tier, that group i guess so that is also something interesting and uh, club roots winning 2-0 against atletico their uh, trouble campaign continues right atletico yes, yes. so mm. a very bad game for them uh, atletico they're struggling in la liga as well they got their victory at the weekend but they're still struggling overall and there have been doubts on simeone about how his system uh, his uh, thought process and his uh, system is not working with the current player he has so that is what they are looking at so uh, he that is something they have to work on but for club bruges i have to give a shout out to farhan jugla who just got a transfer from barcelona to club bruges in the window uh, for approximately 5 million and he has up- scored and like he has a goal involvement in 14 goals till now so that is some crazy stat for a unknown player uh, that too he is uh, showing it on uh, a champions league stage as well not just in his league so yeah uh, very good player to watch out for and definitely if uh, you have to watch this game and uh, ix napoli game if you have missed out for the weekend so let's move on to the match uh, day for the wednesday the match day 2 Yeah. So Leipzig uh, coming out with three one win over Celtic. I watched the um, Chelsea uh, Milan match as well. Chelsea under Potter are still finding their way, and this was a very crucial match for them because they were bottom of the table, and AC Milan were second, I guess. And uh, the tension was palpable at uh, at the bridge, and uh, the Chelsea players started very tentatively and. Uh, Ruben Loftus-Cheek uh, was very critical in this match, and he played a good role as well. And uh, Mount also was seen pulling the strings. James playing as uh, right wing back. Uh, so they played a three-five-one-two, something like that, with uh, o- Oba and uh, Sterling playing a friend, and uh, Mount um, in the number ten role. and uh, james was really high along with Ch- chilwell and james i think assisted one and scored one goal and uh, fofana actually fofana scored uh, as well but he was um, taken off within 5 minutes so 2 minutes of him scoring the goal after he had an injury uh, while he was trying to score that goal uh, like while he was playing so that is a huge blow for them and um, but a great result at the end of the day for porter because uh, i think they will be second in the group uh, if i am not wrong so it's great for them yeah yes you watched the madrid uh, match no i just watched its highlight uh, so very good fact about it was uh, carlo ancelotti has moved to a 4-4-2 where rodrigo who initially started his days with left winger uh, but now vinicius has this spot with him and uh, now he has been playing in all three spots for madrid right wing striker and left wing whenever there is an absentee in that place but now uh, 
Ancelotti, I guess, has uh, got his eyes on him, and he has been given the role of a second striker along with Benzema, which he has played very well. So now, currently, Madrid play four four two with Valverde on the right wing, uh, 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 and both Benzema and uh, Rodrigo as the strikers, and uh, Vinicius on the left wing. So, uh, yeah, so that is what uh, a good thing about them. And Madrid, uh, eventually, not a very tough game for them, but they came out with the result. They had two goals lead and then considered one goal. But yeah, overall, they are top of the table as of now. So, let's move on to the next game. The yes. City game. Was... City 5 0. We are not even surprised but by, by the result because we all expected this. Haaland scored the first two goals, if I'm not wrong, and then he was taken off at half time, and then still they managed to score five goals. Foden and De Bruyne were uh, rested yeah. for this match, and uh, City blowing away teams as usual. And uh, the Dortmund Sevilla match was really good. Uh, Dortmund dominated the game, and um, I guess the Sevilla coach got sacked, right? Yes, yes. And he has been yeah. replaced as and, well so, um, uh, no. by George Sampoli. Bellingham uh, scored a beautiful goal. No, okay. Rafael Guerrero uh, and uh, Bellingham scored the first two goals. Karim Adiemi um, co- came in with the third goal before half time, and then uh, Serie pulled one back, and then Julian Brad with another goal to seal the win for. Dortmund and uh, the Juventus match was very interesting as well because Rabiot uh, for a change has scored a brace and uh, Debra, I think uh, Di Maria assisted all three goals. Uh, some of the passing were uh, ridiculous, especially of Lovic, uh, for the Lovic goal. Uh, the pass between the two centre-backs by Di Maria was amazing. And uh, the crowd was going against Juventus initially, and uh, thankfully for them, the uh, the Rabiot goal uh, got this uh, got the uh, hands on their side, and then um, it was a huge relief for Juventus after all the troubles that they had in the Serie A and also Champions League, and also Benfica was uh, PSC. Uh, Messi scored a stunning goal and uh, Benfica equalized. I was very surprised. I thought uh, uh, PSG would run away with it. No, but uh, they were actually to start the game, they were very bad. They tried playing from the back. Ramos and Danilo, who were playing on Ramos, played as the right center back, and Danilo, who played as the left center back, they were very uh, by, sketchy with their passes behind. And like in the 10 minutes, start 10 minutes, they lost position so many times, lost the ball. Uh, so it was very scary at the starting 10 minutes, but uh, Benfica packed the center and it was really difficult for them, uh, for PSG to uh, get the ball in the forward areas. But luckily, uh, during a move, Messi from the right hand side came inside and Neymar uh, rolled a ball to him and he scored a very good goal. But Benfica came back in the second half and eventually uh, the second half was Paris just trying to score a goal and Benfica sitting and taking the shots on them but uh, they were able to ke- uh, like keep Paris Saint-Germain out and their keeper played a really good part yeah so Paris would be happy with the draw i uh, because both the teams haven't lost in their group so they are at the top of their group so both would be happy with the draw so yeah. that's it for this video host before just we leave uh, the united mass has just over got over so uh, like what were your thoughts about that game okay. It, it was it was Ronaldo trying to score from every angle possible and missing from every angle possible. Even without the goalkeeper, uh, he missed the point blank uh, goal. He hit the woodwork. Uh, he hit the post. So it was uh, so uh, initially Omania scored, and um, uh, you know United came into the uh, match in the second half with uh, Rashford scoring and then Martial coming in uh, made a huge difference. He scored the second goal. He gets the team taking. I've been, we've been talking about this in the uh, uh, in the FPL videos as well because um, he has the capacity to get this uh, 
United team tick. And Ronaldo, as usual, is struggling in this season. He has been really poor and he's down in confidence. He's missing a lot of chances. He's, everyone is trying to give him uh, an assist, but uh, it's not working out for him. And he keeps um, kicking, kicking the air and uh, throwing his hands up, but nothing is working for him, sadly. But uh, eventually, it will turn around for the legendary striker which we know uh, he is and uh, it was a 2-3 very hard fought win for United um, yeah so that was it and United are uh, in the second spot in the group with Real Sociedad uh, uh, being first yeah so that's, so that's it for it. our uh, UCL review yes. Yes, follow right. us on our uh, social media platforms uh, you can see all the links are in the description box below that's it thank you bye